I'm often asked for tips regarding quickly making student oboe reeds. I'm currently working primarily on premium reeds, so I figured I could go over my basic scrape, which I do to every reed before setting it aside to fine tune another day. The same principles apply to the student reeds, I'm just a little more speedy and perhaps less careful. Quick disclaimer, this is my method that I've developed with the help of many teachers, books, and other resources. It may be unconventional, but it is what works for me. If you do it differently, I'm happy to hear your thoughts in the comments. Primarily because I love talking about oboe things, but also because comments help the YouTube algorithm. Thank you. The crux of my strategy with a quick basic scrape is to make it look like a finished reed as soon as possible, while hopefully not removing too much from any part of the reed. The first step is to remove the bark from the whole scraped area of the reed, that is, everywhere but below the W and rails in the back. I keep my scrapes within the channels, which leaves a thicker spine and rails. I scrape until the spine is no longer bark. I can tell because it changes from dark orange and shiny in color to more dull orange or yellow. At this point, I'm gonna scrape the tip just a little bit to prepare to clip it open. As you can see, it is already starting to look like a reed. You can see there is no bark in the scraped area, a nice centered spine, rails, W, and a thin-ish tip. I also used long, smooth scrapes, so it should start vibrating nicely once the tip is made. Clip it open, then mark a straight line across at 19 millimeters above the top of the staple. In this case, since the reed is on a 46 millimeter tube, the tip starts at 65 millimeters. On 47 millimeter tubes, I mark 66 instead. The objective at this point is to make very smooth ramps down from the pencil marking, being relatively thick, to the corners being as thin as possible. I also angle my knife away from the center of the reed and do not mind if it frays slightly. The corners need to be very thin and it is still long enough that all of the fraying will be clipped off. In general, I try to avoid scraping the center of the tip as it can cause brightness in the sound. We want the corners really thin, so you might need to start putting in a little definition at the pencil line, but not much yet. Once all of the corners are nice and thin, go ahead and clip off the frayed bits. Remark 19 millimeters above the thread and do the same step again. Again, we're creating a nice smooth ramp down from the pencil mark to the corners, creating a little definition, but not so much that we create thin spots in the tip and, of course, avoiding the middle of the tip by angling our knife away from it. We're getting closer to finished length, approximately 23 and a half millimeters above the thread, so we want to be more and more careful not to fray the corners too much. Now that the tip is coming along, we can more easily see places where we might not have gone far enough in the heart and back earlier and remove more of the bark in the spine and rails, again staying within the channels. Clean up the W at the very back of the scrape. It's important to have a nice, clean, chiseled out W at approximately four millimeters above the thread. I also personally like to clean up the shape at the top of the reed using a razor blade and plaque. Sometimes the ears are not quite straight off a hand shape, and they look better to me if they're perfectly straight. At this point, we're very close to the quote unquote finished length for the day. We want to try playing it at about 23 and a half millimeters above the thread, in this case, 69 and a half millimeters, or on 47 millimeter staples, 70 and a half millimeters. Right before we clip it to that final length, we want to make sure that the corners are nice and thin, so the tip will be working properly when we play it. Last clip before it's more or less done for the day. Then we're going to crow it, play it, and maybe do some small adjustments before we let the reed rest for a day.
While I was playing the reed, I felt it was a bit inflexible, and tended to go sharper around octave G. I'll talk about it more in a future video, but I know that specifically this problem can be remedied with a few scrapes at the top of the window's back of the heart area. I still want to stay within the channels. Side note, you'll also see that I test the flexibility with my fingers to see if it's improved. That'll drop the pitch, so I also do another little clip to bring it back up. At this point, I set the read aside to continue refining over the next few days. Only a couple minutes of scraping and playing per day. Since cane changes so much on a daily basis, it's unwise to finish it quickly. After a few days of soaking, playing, and tweaking, reeds tend to stabilize into something more consistently playable. For now, a reed that plays, looks decent, and has heft to use as wiggle room for the rest of the process is completely fine. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful and want to see more like it, please let me know by liking this video and commenting your thoughts down below. Please also subscribe to The Reed Whisperer and click the bell so you're aware next time I upload content. You can also check out my website where I offer reads, cane, and private lessons. All of the links are in the description, check them out.